Hi, Chris here. Thanks for stopping by my channel, All Time Jack. Today I'm going to put this motor and pulley system on the lead screw on my old Craftsman Atlas 101. I got it a while back. It's a 1236, and like everyone else, I found out that that 0042, that's as slow as you can turn the lead screw, and it's not slow enough. And that's 0042 per revolution of the spindle, and we got to slow it down. First thing we got to do is make an adapter, and this is inch and three eighths round stock that I have. It ought to work just fine. And this will go on the opposite end of the lead screw from the quick change gearbox. And I'm gonna make it so I can disengage it and still use the gearbox if we wanna do some threading or something. So we gotta make an adapter here with a shaft on one side and the key seat we're gonna to have to cut so we'll use the milling attachment. And then the other side's gonna be an internal thread and then there's gonna be a space in the middle where we can put some flats on there so we can get a wrench on it. We'll face this side off and it's hard to see, but when you run your fingernail across there, it'll hang in all the machine marks. It is a decent rough finish. I've made a couple of things on it and it's fine, but I've got a project coming up and I'm gonna need a little bit smoother finish on there. And there's several ways to slow your lead screw down. I'm just doing it this way because I have most of this stuff already. Looking pretty good. Let's center drill it. And when we drill it out to size, this will help with the bit, keep it from jogging around so much. Have a nice centered straight hole to tap some threads into. This is a 2964 drill bit, will be for a half inch 20 thread. And I have a tap for that so we won't have to cut them. And having a nice evenly sharpened drill bit is always good. I haven't been able to exactly nail down the year that this was made. I think it's about 55 years old, somewhere around 1969, 1970. I also have another video installing the DRO on this thing if you'd like to check it out. I'll put a link in the description. And that thing is awesome, man. And if you don't have one, it don't matter. But once you do have one, you always want to have one. So we got some threads on there now. Let's do a preliminary fit. And let's take this nut off. This will be the one we're replacing. Gonna leave the thrust washers on there, add a spacer. Goes on nice, good fit. So now I need to figure out how wide that midsection needs to be, where the shoulder needs to be, and how long the shaft needs to be and what size. So the pulley I ordered did not come in yet. Uh, it was supposed to, but it didn't make it. So this one has the same size bore and I'm just gonna use this one and get it all going and I was thinking about leaving that one on there at this point because it's short of the ways so I could still slide that tailstock off if I needed to for some reason the one I have coming I won't be able to do that but as you saw in the beginning I went ahead and put the bigger one on when it came in it's still not that big of a deal because of the way I build this system I can just slack it and pull it right off if I ever had to probably never have to not very often anyway looks like we're about there on the shaft size let's check it out very nice good fit so now let's pull the nut back off put the adapter on again and make sure we got the shoulder in the right place for the pulley everything looks good tighten her up hold the pulley up there and eyeball it make sure we're not going to hit the ways and there's our adapter. We're going to need a key seat in it though now, so we're going to have to put the milling attachment on. But let's take just a second and check out exactly what we're doing. Right here I'm selecting the gears. The lead screw is going into that gearbox and I'm selecting the speeds. Now you can see there again, 0 .0042 is as slow as we can go with this gear set. So we can engage it with the banjo. Now when we turn the machine on, we get everything is spinning. Just not slow enough. So now we can engage the crossfeed. And notice that crossfeed handle turning. We need it to turn about half that fast or less. Now we disengage crossfeed. Disengage the banjo. Now our gear sets are disengaged from each other. But you'll notice I still can't turn the lead screw by hand because the quick change gearbox is still in gear. 
So we're going to want to disengage the quick change gearbox completely by letting them lay at rest. And now you can see I can spin the lead screw by hand. And so you can also see that it's spinning that other little collar right there. That is the gear set shaft, but it's not engaged with anything. So I think we're fine putting the motor on the other end as long as those quick change levers are disengaged. Under normal operation with that quick change gearbox, those two gears that are meshing spin both ways anyway. So as long as you got the proper amount of backlash, I think it'd be all right. Man, don't lose these little pins out of these. Make you something to wedge in there that holds them. So now I'm gonna put the milling attachment on here. And we gotta do a couple of things with this. These milling attachments will do some light stuff on here. I was fortunate enough to get a lot of the accessories. I didn't get everything. And then some of the stuff I got, there was parts and pieces of it. But I did get a lot of it. And it's gonna allow us to get this done, even though if it's not exactly how it should be done. There's not much about this that's going to have to be real super precision. Really the closest thing we got to nail is getting these shafts the right size. And that's pretty easy. So that keyway fit in there just perfect. And now we got a 45 degree grub screws on here. And I'm going to remove this chuck and I'm going to put a mill in the draw bar. And we're going to mill some flat so we can get a wrench on it. And I'm gonna have to kind of get creative here with the setup. And again, this is not how you would do this professionally or for a customer, but it'll work just fine for what I need it for here. So I'm gonna bring the carriage up, get this adapter mounted in here. There's a piece missing here. One of the pieces I was talking about, and I know this is a little shady, but it held and if I get a flat milled on that side, I can flip it over and suck it up tight against the rear and then flip it back over and finish this side again. And it worked out pretty good. You can order a bracket for this motor, but I'm just gonna make one real quick. I don't have any plate big enough for what I need, so I'm gonna use these quarter inch thick shipping brackets. I'll just cut them apart and weld them together. So instead of my oxygen acetylene torches, I'm gonna use this new plasma cutter I just got on Prime Day's deal. Got a huge discount on it. We'll see how it works. I honestly wasn't expecting much, but it's working pretty good. We'll see how it holds up. Just for the price, I couldn't help myself. I'm cutting on 30 amp with 47 PSI, I think, maybe 45. I'll put a link in the description. It's the best art BTC 500, seventh gen, I think. And now I'm just getting them welded up. I'm doing this with my Lincoln 180 IMP DV weld pack. I'll put a link in the description to that too. If you don't have a mag drill and some annular cutters, man, you are missing out. Gotta be a little careful here because that thin tabletop doesn't hold that magnet very good. I can't remember where I got this, but if I can find it, I'll put a link for it too. Now I'm just cutting out some uh, gussets and then we'll get those fitted and welded. Please consider subscribing if you're into this sort of thing and slap that like button too, please. I'm not gonna drill any more holes in my lathe, so I'm just gonna put a shelf here and mount the motor on the shelf. I've been wanting to put a shelf here anyway for a little while, and this gave me a perfect reason to do it. This is just a piece of pine. It'll be plenty sufficient for what we need to do with it. This is the motor I have. I got it a couple of years ago on Amazon. I don't remember what I bought it for, or what I was gonna do with it but it should work. It's a high torque, low speed motor. It comes with a controller, it's variable speed, and it's also reversible. It's supposed to be able to run it at pretty low speeds, but it even says on there, don't run it at its lowest speed for very long, so it'll overheat, but that's pretty much exactly what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna add another fan to it for some extra cooling. So I've never used any of these link belts before. I didn't think I ever would. 
but somehow I ended up with two or three Amazon packages full of them. And honestly, they work pretty good. They sure make belt fitment easy. So this is what I'm gonna use for a tensioner. And again, it's pieces of a shipping bracket from a machine I installed somewhere and an old idler pulley that came off of a machine I worked on somewhere. I had to modify it and clean it up a little bit, but I think it's gonna work just perfect. Looking pretty good. That'll make it easy to slack the belt too if I wanna use the gearbox for threading or something. So I'm just gonna drop the controls back here for a second, plug it in and test it before I go any further. Looking pretty good. Got the variable speed. I think she's a working good. She is alive. Now I'm gonna put all these controls in this little box here. This first piece I'm putting here is the reversing switch. It doesn't come with the motor. You'll get the capacitor and the controller and the motor, but you'll have to find your own reversing switch. Dremel's plastic cutting disc, of course. I have several of these little boxes, different sizes. I've used some of my other videos too. They're great for this. They're pretty cheap, they're easy to modify, and if you screw them up, it really don't matter. You don't feel too bad about it. And there we are. Let's drill a hole in the bottom. We can put a seal tight on there. Bring the electrical up through there. And I'm gonna wire it up to 120. It's pretty simple. Make sure you don't have the other end plugged into the wall though. And make sure you got good connections. Now I'm just wiring up the reversing switch. You just have a common in the middle and it'll connect to a contact on either side for a CW or CCW. Clockwise or counterclockwise, forwards or reverse, whatever you want to call it. Well, I think that'll do it. Let's go stick it on the wall and plug her in and see what happens. Here we go. So right about here is when I got the other pulley in. So I went ahead and put the other pulley on. It's still not the pulley that I ordered. So I do have still yet another pulley coming. It's a little bit bigger. I was able to get a decent finish though, even with a carbide. You can still see the machine marks, but it won't hang your fingernail. Not bad. I did grind a piece of high-speed steel afterwards and got a really good finish with the high-speed steel. Really difficult to get a surface finish with a carbide on a smaller lathe like this, even though it's not a bench top, it's not a big mighty monarch or anything. Thanks for watching. See you next time.